Media Pennsylvania is a town with just over 5,300 residents. Even though the town is small, it is an important town since it is the first town in the United States to become a fair trade town. So my dear boss, Hal Talsig, suggested to me one day that we make media a fair trade town. I laughed at him. I couldn't imagine what that would look like. I only knew products like fair trade coffee with a certified label on it. And I couldn't imagine what that would mean for a whole town. So just to humor how I googled fair trade towns, up googled the world's first fair trade town, Garstang, England. And again, just to humor him, I wrote to them. Three minutes later, they wrote back. We've been waiting for someone in the US to start the fair trade town movement. And the founder of fair trade towns in the world, Bruce Crother, mentored us in making media fair trade town. And we followed the criteria that the UK had established for fair trade towns that includes that so many stores per capita have to sell so many fair trade items, so many businesses like law offices have to use fair trade items, the town has to pass a resolution in support of being a fair trade town, and several other things. I first learned about fair trade when I was at the Media Theater and Tom Hibbert was one of our board members and he introduced me. The initial concept was just great. <clears throat> Tom was uh, getting ready to make his trip to the United Kingdom to speak with other fair trade towns. Media was ripe for it. It's a very progressive town and we became the first fair trade town in the U.S. in July of 2006. My wife and I uh, began our business in 2002. We are primarily focused on U.S. made pottery and ceramics. However, we've always had a couple items in here from international uh, sourcing. In 2005, I was approached by some community people that were interested in becoming a fair trade town. And those people heard about me because I was selling some fair trade products in the store and asked if I would be interested in participating participating in the committee to make media the first fair trade town in the United States. We've gotten visits from the farmers and over the years we've taken them to some of our educational campaigns through the fair trade movement in the local elementary schools. Additionally, uh, we just started to incorporate fair trade certified soccer balls, uh, which is a little dangerous in the fragile shop, but we're figuring out how to sell them and uh, make sure that we can get ethically made vegan soccer balls to all the soccer players in the area. So explaining the concept of fair trade is interesting to people and it grows on them. The more restaurants, the more retail, the more that become familiar with fair trade, the more it's going to grow. It's a growing thing and being in media as a county seat to 570,000 people, it's a slow process, but more and more people are learning about fair trade. Our biggest success is educating children in the schools. And we educate all the fourth graders, for example, in our local school through a role play on fair trade. The kids have made demands on the stores and restaurants to have more fair trade items. And then when they shop and dine in media, they ask for fair trade products. So each year, the product offerings grow. Growing up in media, I feel like it was around from a young age, which I feel super grateful for. I got officially involved with the committee in 10th grade of high school, I think. I worked with Elizabeth. Um, we produced a calendar to promote fair trade in media. And then I guess throughout high school, I continued to stay involved. And now that I'm in college, I like to do what I can, when I can. I wouldn't say that fair trade creates additional challenges, but we, we have to go through the same rigor morale as, as any other products. I will say that selling fair trade products is easier with the uh, nonprofit support that we have through having a committee committed to educating and promoting fair trade. With some products like sugar, you notice the differential in price easily. Fair trade does not use child labor and slave labor, and to produce Fair trade sugar, it just costs more. Not a lot more, but we're trying to educate people that it's worth not having children produce their food. With things like high quality coffee and high quality chocolate, you don't see a difference between fair trade and its competitors. But it's important to learn what the fair trade labels are, look for those, and choose those over the others. The steps you take to educate people on fair trade is just ask them to try it. Go to one of our restaurants, go to one of our establishments, purchase, and, and try it. And the more people that do it, not everybody's going to say, oh, I'm on board, but that, that's how you grow it. 
And while not everything in a fair trade town needs to be fair trade per se, there are enough options for you to be a more cautious and conscientious customer. Of course, everything can't be fair trade. We can't dictate as a municipality that everybody carries fair trade from here on out. But fair trade creates an opportunity for us to make those decisions when purchasing and the Fair Trade Town Committee is committed to promoting those businesses that sell these products. Media has set the tone for many other towns in the United States looking to receive the Fair Trade certification. There are now 44 Fair Trade Towns in the U.S. and hopefully many more to come.